If you want to get an Altair 8800 these days, you better get ready to dig deep. Unfortunately, that's just going to be the case with the 8800. There's so much history behind it. It's such an old machine, and, well, S100 machines in general are very expensive. But true to my unique record of getting interesting machines, I have an Altair 8800 here right now. And let's turn it on. Yep, turns on, it functions. It's not just a dummy box here. And let's see if I can reset it. I'm going to examine an address. I'm going to turn on my terminal over here. The screen warms up. There we go. Let it run. And there goes CPM. But hold on a second here. Where's my floppy drive? How the hell did I just load CPM? I obviously just loaded up it loaded up um, the bootloader and the PROM card. But where's the rest of it? Well, like I said, they're expensive, but there's less expensive options you can take. And for $625, I have here the Altair clone. And it looks exactly like an Altair 8800. Front panel looks absolutely fantastic. Um, switches, LEDs, again, unless you looked really closely to the front, you'd never know that this was a replica machine. The case is absolutely amazing on its own. Um, looks exactly like an Altair 8800. It's metal as well, so it's very, very, it's no plastic, very well built. Um, we have all our connections in the back here if you want to add something. We have eight 25-pin uh, knockouts for 25-pin connectors. We have two little holes here, I guess, if you want to add RCA jacks or something like that for, say, a center interface. It's even got a fan in it. And um, it, it's kind of strange. You don't really need a fan in this Altair clone. And that's simply because there's nothing in it at all. Um, the entire Altair 8800 has been reduced to, I'd say, about three or four sa chips surface-mounted to the front of this printed circuit board right here, which is the front panel. The rest of it's empty space. This is the piddly little power supply right here that powers the whole thing, and I have two, serial, two actual serial ports on this thing because it uses flash memory. There's a fantastic integrated little utility you can... Um, send files um, to this. You can create virtual disk drives. You have 64K of memory. Um, you can do everything that a generic Altair 8800 can do, but you do not have S100 slots. And you may have noticed I have something taped right here, and I have um, four unused S100 connectors. And the idea is that, again, I can't afford a real Altair 8800. But for 600 bucks, I get myself an enclosure and a front panel that's pre-manufactured for me. So it's nothing says that I can convert this into a real Altair 8800. The construction on this is fantastic. I can just mount it to the bottom here. And heck, I might even be able to add a hidden switch somewhere on this so I can actually convert it between uh, running conventional uh, emulated mode here. And say, well, it just hung up on me there for some reason. But uh, the emulated mode here and running the physical hardware where I can actually uh, add S100 cards like, say, the Dazzler or um, the music card or just stuff like that. There's a lot of potential in this here. And, again, expensive for 625 bucks, but the quality, the build quality in this thing here, uh, what you get out of it, and what comes with it. There's actually a rather impressive amount of documentation available for this, both in PDF form and in print form with the machine. <coughs> Pardon me. Yes, if you can get one, head over to www.altairclone.com right now and buy one. There is a limited quantity of these. He just got back into stock. He might run out of stock again. There's no guarantees he's going to make another run of them. Get one. I'm serious. If you want an Altair, get one right now.